Thank you, Stephen. Congratulations. See, I, I didn't know today how much or even to mention T at all. Because like Stephen, I was so blessed to broadcast Padre baseball for 20 years while Tony played. And it was a game and then a game within the game to watch him bat four times, and I don't know what I ever did to deserve something so wonderful and so great and to call him friend and to broadcast Aztec basketball from the time he played in 1978 as a fine little point guard, eventually drafted by the NBA. So not to impose on you, but just can you give me, a, give me an ovation for Tony Gwynn one time here? Can you? Thank you. It's just, it's just the first event we've had, all of us in the Aztec family coming together without him. And the wound is still too raw. It just is. Life ain't fair. We understand that. But man, oh man, some you just cannot get over. But I love this family theme of people talking about their family and Kirk and Steven and all the rest of them because they always talk about sports builds character. No, it reveals character. And it reveals it built by families like this. That's what it does. That's what it does, including our next inductee into the Aztec Hall of Fame, soccer. And one of those guys that built this program that now you look at the men's and the women's soccer here, it's one of the greats, not good, one of the greats in the country. And he was a big part of that with a multiple All-American. And most of us who don't know soccer, you know, need to learn soccer. I <laughs> forget, I did a live, live report on the Channel 8 News one time with Ron Newman, who was the soccer's coach when they played. And I said to him live, we don't know much about soccer coaches. Is there some basic you know, philosophy or tenet that we should know about? And he said, oh, it's the, same. it's the same all the time. I tell the lads the same thing. If it moves, kick it. If it doesn't, kick it until it does. That's my first introduction to soccer from Ron Newman. And this was a place. This is not just a great soccer player, a great athlete. Friends of his have told me he could have played football, could have played basketball, could have played them all. True All-American and Aztec Hall of Fame inductee Kyle Whittemore. It's been 26 years since setting men's soccer records, and they still hold today for Kyle Whittemore. A member of SDSU's 1987 national runner-up team, Kyle earned second team All-America honors in 1987 and was a four-time Far West All-America selection. Whittemore still holds SDSU records for goals with 21 and points scored in a season with 50 and also holds the program's top spot in career goals and points with 68 and 160 respectively. He was a Herman Trophy finalist in 1988, a first team academic All-American in 1987 and 88, and a second team academic All-America pick in 1986. He capped off his Aztec career by being named MVP of the 1988 Senior Bowl. Kyle Whittemore, a member of the 2014 Aztec Hall of Fame. To present Kyle, his former coach, Chuck Clegg. The first time Kyle saw me speak, it was at the NCAA tournament. And there was coaches, and they had administrators, and they were going on and on, and they had four teams there, and it got really long, kind of about th this long. So I got up, and I said, you know, a coach's job that speaks last is to get up, shut up, and sit down. I got a standing ovation from all the players in the audience, not so much the administrators. That was the first time he saw me speak. On the recommendation of one of our players, Ted Wacker, appropriate name for a defender, he told me about this goal scorer up in Seattle, Washington. So I went up to watch him, watch him play. And this kid was raw. He hit like a linebacker. He had a signature move. He'd play his back to goal, people hang out. He just liked to hit people. I thought he was going to be recruited for football. He was really a good football player, but a better soccer player. Kyle liked to mix it up. He had a signature move hanging with his back to goal, people hanging all over him. He turned and fired into the net. He just scored goals. And people, sometimes coaches get wrapped up into looking for negative things in recruits. 
And they said, well, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that, he doesn't do that. All he does is score a goal a game. And I went, and really? Your point is? No, I didn't say anything out loud. I just kept quiet because they were looking for things not to recruit Kyle. Then I went for a home visit or tried to go for a home visit. He said, coach, I'm going to take a year off. I'm not going to college right out of high school. This was unheard of. Very few athletes coming out of high school take a year off. Kyle did that. And most of the coaches went on to the next greatest thing. You know how that goes in coaching. And they forgot about Kyle. I didn't forget. Next year, I went for a home visit. I go up to his house in Seattle. And I'm, a home visit was kind of unusual because it was a breakfast. And who eats breakfast? 8 a.m. in the morning, I'm there for breakfast with the family, and it's a home visit. Kyle lumbers out of the, uh, his bedroom, comes to the breakfast table, sits around, we're having coffee, and we're talking about things. And I'm noticing the game's pretty close. All of a sudden, Kyle remembers that, oh, the game's at 9. He says, Chuck, you've got to follow me, and you better keep up. Well, stop signs in Seattle going to the field means slow to observe police because we ran every one of them. We went through everything, and we made it to the field. He slides his car in, jumps out of the car, getting dressed as he goes, and plays the game and does fantastic. And we signed him that year in 1984. He was the fir he, not the first. He was one of 11 players we got from the Seattle area. Can you imagine? It even rained this morning to celebrate his Seattle roots this morning. <laughs> But 11 players, all you got to do is bring them down to San Diego State. I don't know if all the players here know, but if you take a, a, a men's recruit in San Diego State and walk them across campus and just show them everything, their head's on a swivel because they love this school. This school, I started here when it was San Diego State College and now San Diego State University. It's a great, great place to go. And kids love this school. In 1984, he came as a freshman, he scored 20 goals. He tore it up. He was on the all-freshman team. NCAA. And he got great notes in 1984. And he, first game I remember, we're playing the NCAA champion, Indiana. Coming off of uh, the win, we're playing in a Vegas tournament. And we always went to Vegas because they had the cheapest food in town. And we love Vegas. And all my players love Vegas. First game, he scores a goal against them. We go up 1 nothing, And then he hits the post, hits the crossbar. And then IU. I see their coach talking to a few defenders, and the next thing I know, they took Kyle pretty much out of the game. He got injured that game, but he went on and scored 20 goals that year. 1985, we're looking for bigger and better things. He goes to the National Sports Festival for the Olympic team. He's about to be selected for our Olympic team. He's in the final game for the West, he has an assist on a goal, then he gets a compound fracture of his leg. Well, at the time, there's no internet and cell phones, so I'm going to the airport, and I tell my wife Donna, I said, Hey, I'm going to pick up the franchise. And I'm just, you know, I'm real happy. It's preseason. I go down to the airport. He's not on the plane. In those days, you could actually go to the gate and pick people up. Well, I see a wheelchair coming out with a splint and a leg coming out. With that compound fracture, they wheeled him off the plane. They just put, him, put meds in him from Baton Rouge, sent him to here so our team doctors could do the surgery. So he redshirted in 1985. So in 1986, he came back with a real purpose, sense of purpose. In 1986, he scored in 17 different games. Over half the nation's teams in NCAA Division I didn't score in 17 different games. And that's a statistic that's more important because how many games you score in, not how many goals you can get against a weak opponent. They're strong with a meek and meek with a strong. He was always strong in every game that he played. In 1987, we had our scholarship meeting. Kyle comes in a scholarship meeting, and I think he's going you know, to look for an increase because we're an equivalency sport, so you don't get all full rights. He surprised me by giving back part of his scholarship money so we could recruit a top player who became uh, a national team player and a leading scorer for the United States. He helped us get that player in 1987. And in 87, this team, there's only 24 teams invited to the playoffs. We were the last team to get in. You know, people just didn't think much of us at that time. We had a down year, maybe two years before, when Kyle was injured. So we're the last team to get in. So we go on the road. Our first opponent's eight-time NCAA champion, St. Louis. Never lost a playoff game at home. 40-mile-an-hour wins. Kyle kicks the ball from defense because the wind is going 40 miles an hour against us. Goes back over his head. And we're just getting hammered. We're down one nothing. but a minute before halftime, uh, half Kyle decides, I better go up front and try and do something, not pack it in the back. 
goes up, minute before halftime, ties it up. Second half, we're with the win, we win the game easily. We went, that gave us a belief that we could do anything and beat anyone. We beat SMU, UCLA, and we beat number one Harvard in the NCAA semifinal, and we went all the way to the championship final. And unfortunately, it was not to be, wasn't meant to be. We hit the crossbar of the post, and soccer is the most unfair game in the world. You can be the best team and not win. I think that's why most Americans don't like the game. <laughs> but it was, it was such a run to be the, on the road the whole time. And we never played a home game that whole year, and we were the last seed to get in. He is the most important player ever in our Aztec men's program. His, his goal scoring is just unbelievable. It's the amount of games that he scored in. He was unbelievable. But I think the thing he was most proud of, he was an academic All-American. And he really prided himself to be an academic All-American. His pro career was cut short. He had a severe injury, ACL injury, that just put him out. And then he made an adult decision. He said, am I going to hang on and try? Or am I going to go on with my life? I think one of the best stories that I could tell you is our team was inducted in 2002 into the Hall of Fame. And we were inducted with the 1941 men's basketball team, America's greatest generation. I don't know if you know it, but I still think it's America's greatest generation. And Kyle sat there mesmerized talking to all the athletes on the 1941 team, the San Diego State College, we were SDSC, and just talking to him, and he just marveled at the commitment and the stories, and they swapped stories, and to see him laughing and carry on, he was more impressed coming away from that Hall of Fame about the 1941 team than our 1987 team being inducted to the Hall of Fame. His first letter of intent was with me, but his second letter of intent was more important at San Diego State. He met his wife, he met his wife Penny, in the Aztec freshman dorms, and I think all of us got story about Aztec freshman dorms, about meeting our future. <laughs> wives. Well, anyway, they now have Max and Taylor, and after they graduated, he graduated, he now works for Lindquist Corporation. He's a managing partner with Lindquist Corporation. But the measure of the man, I get tears. I was listening to all these people. I'm getting tears in the audience. I'm getting tears now just thinking about, you know, again, Tony and just the Aztec family and just everything. This summer, he came down with his son, Max, and his whole job they went to Comic-Con. Here he is, a managing partner. He spent a whole week with his son, and his job was to stand in line for his son at Comic-Con so he could get into the great events. Didn't complain. He was staying with, they were staying with us, and he'd just come back, and he was thrilled. He was on his phone. He was doing whatever. But he said Comic-Con, he just did it for his son and his family. And that's truly the way, that's the measure of Kyle. Without further delay, Please welcome Kyle Whittemore, 2014 Hall of Fame inductee for men's soccer, one of the few select people to be as an individual and a team into the Hall of Fame, an academic All-American, and a national All-American. Let's go, Kyle. become so emotional. Jesus. And we're listening to the, we're listening to the baby cry and now we're all crying. This is great. This is this has been it's been a wonderful time. Um, we uh, we came down yesterday. We actually went to the basketball games the first time in the in Viejas. I'm in there crying. I mean this is great. What has happened here at San Diego State and what where this program is compared to where it was when we went to the sports arena to watch basketball and so on. It is just fantastic. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, kind of mention when you're the last speaker, generally everybody's already kind of pushing their way out the door, so I promise to be brief, you know, usually in the way of cocktails or dinner or lunch or a flight. So I'll do my best to be, to be brief. Um, first of all, I just I want to thank the selection committee uh, for, for inducting me. Uh, this is great. Um, but the thing I really want to, I really think this is about, is about the San Diego soccer program. Um, this is about that team, right? This is about where that program is. You know, the, the 87 team was brought, you know, the, we inducted the 87 team, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. But really what this is all about is, to me, is a recognition of Chuck, Donna, um, everybody else has been involved with Aztec soccer since George Logan in the beginnings because where this program has gone and where it's come to has been great. And anything that I've done to make it happen, I'm very proud of. Uh, you know, again, this is, you know, these are individual honors. And, um, 
but again, it's a, it's a team honor, let's face it. You know, we, they showed the numbers, the goals, and the goals that I scored and so on. But I've got some other numbers. Um, the, team that I, the teams that I played for, 63, 18, and 8. We won 70% of our games, okay? Uh, we scored 221 goals as a team. That's two and a half goals a game. Now, the reason Americans don't like soccer is because there's no scoring. Let's, let's call it what it is, okay? We scored goals, okay? We scored a lot of goals. And, you know, it wasn't just me, believe me. We had guys in midfield who came in and scored. We had guys at defense who came in and scored. And it was, it was so much fun. Um, again, it's a team sport, right? The goalie screws up, you lose. Defense screws up, you lose. Midfield screws up, you lose. Forward screws up, you might, just might not win, right? So as a forward, your job is to score goals. Everybody else's job is to get you the ball so you can score. Guess what? Here I am in the Hall of Fame. I like it, huh? <laughs> uh, again, I, I want to recognize the groundwork that, that was laid by the program when, when I came to school here. And I'm going to recognize some of the people that, that helped do that. Um, I want to mention some folks that came today, uh, Rob and his wife Stacy and his daughter Lauren, who's here looking at the school. So everybody make sure we be nice and she's get her to, get her to come be another Aztec. <laughs> Um, a couple quick stories on Rob. So Rob was, Rob was one of my first roommates, really, in an apartment. And, you know, he was, he was really interested in being my roommate. And I'm like, why does he really want to be my roommate? You know, he knew my wife and he knew my brother-in-law, you know, my, my now brother-in-law. But I couldn't figure out why he liked, why he really wanted to be my roommate. First day of school when the handicap passed because I had a broken leg because I was coming back from the sports festival. I'm like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, this, the second story I have for Rob is when I broke my leg, he actually took me to one of my appointments to actually have the screw taken out of my, of my ankle. And so he kind of he comes walking in me and Dr. Orwig, who's, you know, someone who, who worked for the program a long time ago, and God bless his soul, he's, you know, he comes in and he kind of sees him and he goes, do you really want to stay? And Rob's like, oh, I don't know. And then Orwig pulls out the scalpel and Rob just goes, whew, white. And if, and if he'd stayed more than two more seconds, he would have been on the floor and out cold. A <laughs> um, couple other folks, Glenn and Rita Nelson and their daughter, Laura. So these are new friends that I've met in my life, and they're down here with us. I thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. It's great. Uh, a couple stories. I won't bore you with a bunch of things, but, you know, Chuck talks a little bit about recruiting, and you're walking people through the campus, and, and you know, as a, as a young man, again, 18 years old, he, didn't, he, he was a little sharper about the whole thing. He picked me up at the airport and took me straight to South Mission, right? So, and I'm just, you know, I'm from Seattle, all right? And I'm looking, I'm going, where's the paperwork, all right? Where do we sign, all right? I'm in. Um, the second is kind of a quick trip that Teddy and I took. I think this was our second year here. We decided to go to Ensenada, right? Go down to the beach, all right? Let's go have some lobster. So, you know, we pack into the car and we drive on down there and of course we head to the store, get a couple cases of Corona, right? We're head out to the beach and now we're all out on the beach and we're sitting and we got our beer and, and we got the bottle opener. <laughs> so, I, so at this point, I now know how to open a bottle on a rusty chair. <laughs> good, skill, good skills to have. Um, the, fi you know, the final story I want to tell, and again, there's a bunch more, but my daughter's here. And she's 17, and she's going to college, and she gets to experience some of her own. And I don't ever want to hear, well, Dad, you did that. What's the problem? You know? So um, the last one is, is the return from the final. You know, we, we, you know, we, we, lose, in the, we lose in the final against Clemson. And, you know, we're all, it's like, it's just horrible. We've got to fly all the way back across the country. You know, Clemson's in the middle of nowhere, all right? Let's face facts, all right? They're in the middle of nowhere. Um, so we're flying out of Atlanta, Eastern Airlines. Many of you may not remember this. They were on strike. The unions were not too happy. Hour outside of Atlanta, there's a big bang. Plane lifts over about 15 degrees and goes, eh. We thought it was it, right? We were, we were sure this was the end, right? I mean, it's, we're, we're, all, we're all dying, and that's all there is to it. They don't say a word. The guy, pilot doesn't say a word. Nobody comes and says anything to us. So, you know, kind of another hour goes by, and Somebody's like, well, God, you know, I'm thirsty. Let me go, you know. So he walks in the back, and the flight attendant is belted in, right? And he says, can I get something to drink? And she goes, cart's in the back. Get it yourself. <laughs> and we're like, whoa. Right. 
So we get to Phoenix and we notice coming into Phoenix that we keep seeing the airport going by, right? And going by and going by. And we're, you know, we're like, what's going on? No word, right? Finally, they put us down. Felt really weird going in. They stopped, they stopped the plane at the end of the runway. Ten minutes, finally clunk. They pull it. They drag us in for 15 minutes. Not a word. We walk off the plane. We're just kind of walking through. We get to the security. The security guy goes, oh, you guys on that Eastern flight? Yeah. He goes, oh, pretty hairy, huh? <laughs> well, so they landed us in foam. The hydraulics on the plane had popped, and they didn't know if the landing gear was staying down. So the, the, they, were flying by the, they were flying by the tower to see if the landing gear was down. Flying was not good for me after that. And no, 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 no 10-hour no bus rides for me. I just went to the bar. So um, a couple other folks that I'd like to, I'd like to recognize. Uh, Brad Walsh. Brad, how's it going? And your wife, thanks, thank you for coming. You know, Brad, Brad came to us in 86. So this was after I broke my leg. He was kind of, when, when I came back, here's Brad. And quiet. Right? We, we, the guy would not say a word. We never talked to him. All I knew is that every day we had a 30-minute scrimmage, and I could not get by him. Right? Every time, and I'm like, who is this kid? Right? So I finally figured out how to, how to beat Brad. It was to go over the other side of the field and play over on the other side. So <laughs> um, Eric Drab, who's actually not here, this was part of our Seattle contingent who came down. You know, again, you see the goals, but the goals come because somebody serves you the ball, so you're in front. I can't tell you how many of my goals were one touch. It's a header, right? It's off the foot. That, that doesn't happen because I do anything other than be in the right place at the right time. And unless the, everybody else does their job, unless the team does their job, there is no success and the team doesn't succeed. And that's what it's about. Uh, the next person I want to talk about, oh, I knew I was going to get emotional on this one. I'm sorry. I didn't know where to, I was going to put this one at the end, so you only have to listen to me cry for a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, Jay? So one person who, uh, uh, so my mother-in-law passed away not too long ago. Um, and Trudy was great. The team, you know, a bunch of the team knew them because, you know, they came by the house and she took care of everybody. Penny and I just knew each other. We'd barely been dating. We had 12 San Diego State soccer players and she's feeding them and cooking them lasagna. And it was just, she was just a wonderful lady. Um, and at her burial, <laughs> my son Max, uh, we kind of, we were almost done. He puts his hand up, and, and he struggles getting out what he, what he wants to say, and he gets to the end, and he says, my grandma was a winner. And Jay, I just want you to know that. You're a winner too, buddy, okay? You really are. All right. I'll get it out, I promise. Um, Chuck and Donna, you guys are my parents, man. You guys, you guys have been just, you know, you're my mom. You know, and you guys have been great. You've done nothing but be everything for me. Comic Con, we come to, we come to Comic Con. Donna grabs my son and goes, I just, "Max, I want you to see this. This is your. This is my son. And because he's my son, you're my son. And that love and the ability to be able to it's it's great. And thank you for everything. I mean, you, you know, Chuck, you built this program. You laid the groundwork for what this is. And you you should be as proud about this as anybody. And to me, this is about this, my induction, is about you. And so I just want you to know that, okay? I really feel that. Um, Penny, you know, met school and uh, it's been a long, fun ride. You know, we met in the dorms as, we met in the dorms as freshmen and, um, you know, Taylor, ready to go to school, huh? It's gonna be fun, this is, this is what it's about. So, uh, you know, um, the last person that I, that I want to recognize, and, and honestly, this is a person, this is the only reason I came to San Diego State. And at the end of the day, it's the only reason I met my wife. It's the only reason I have the kids I have. It's the only reason I know Jay. It's the only reason I know Glenn, and it's Ted Wacker. You know, uh, Chuck mentioned him at the beginning, but Ted's the reason I came here. Ted came, Ted came to me. You know, I took the year off. I'd played youth ball with him. He says, Kyle, you gotta, you got to come down. It's going to be great. Weather's great. You're going to start. It's going to be awesome. And that's, he's why I came, right? And everything that follows is from what, you know, is from that. Um, you know, my, you know, I've got, you know, my kids are, my kids are here, they're getting ready to go to college. You know, he, he's responsible for that. And, and I feel somewhat, maybe there's some, some liability there too, because as my kids go to school, I'm thinking maybe you should help a little. Room and board would be fine, all right? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, again, the last, you know, it's my parents, you know, I thank my parents, they're not here, but you know, it's, we, all, we all know as athletes, you know, that your parents drove you to every single practice. They, they're the ones who drug you, they're the ones who threw the ball with you. Um, my favorite story is when I turned 16, my mom, I won't say she threw the keys at me, but <laughs> close enough and said, drive yourself to practice, but that's what they do, right? I mean, that's, you know, that's, she's like, well, I'm done, here, go. Um, again, in, in closing, you know, thank you for everything. This is, you know, this has been a great event. The other honoree, you know, the other inductees, congratulations. This is awesome. I'm so proud to be with this group, and thank you. Kyle Whittemore, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. We'll take his picture. And then I would like for Shayla and Kirk and Peter all to come up here, all the inductees with Kyle, Stephen, for the group picture. I also want to thank Ernie Anderson here. Ernie's only in his 47th year of shooting our picture here at San Diego State. Way to go, Ern. Way to go, kid. 47. 47 years. And Jen Bruton and Sherry Barch Bertram. And Mr. Stirk, of course, Mr. Wise, and the Hall of Fame Committee. This is a, a really special, special event every year for a very special Hall of Fame. By the way, we didn't do this the first year, but we, we learned, you know what I mean? This, this is not an accident that they just happened to put this here. I don't have a cold. They just know there is great emotion when you love your university and you're an Aztec for life. We'll see you at the football game tonight. Go Aztecs! <laughs>